Hi, I'm Bob Gimlin, and today I have another Bigfoot report I'd like to share. Here it goes. Hi, Bob. I heard a strange vocalization. That is all. But it was enough to turn me into a Bigfoot sleuth. I'm not yet prepared to call myself a Sasquatch believer, but let me put it this way. Something is out there. I know that because I've heard it. Not to blow my own horn, but I'd like to think that my work history gives me some clout on the matter. My career path is complicated, so I'll simplify it. Even I have to look at my own resume to remember it all. I have a bachelor's in biology and animal science, and I have a master's in veterinary and medicine. As an Ohio native, I grew up working on farms, where I learned to appreciate livestock. As a little girl, my plan had been to go into biochemistry and work for one of the big guys because that's where the money's at. But life took me in a different direction. In school, I absolutely fell in love with working with animals, especially the ones you don't see every day. It's addicting. Basically, the bulk of my career was spent as a radiologist, on retainer for accredited zoos and aquariums. I retired in the catastrophic year of 2020, and my AVA is expired. But my husband makes good money, and I wanted to be a bigger part of my kids' lives. Missing as much as I already have nearly killed me, so I'm happy with my choices. Anyway, this took place in Orleans County, Vermont, in March of 2011. I suppose I was 32 at the time. My husband and I were at a company retreat for his work. It was one of those deals where the first day was inspirational mumbo-jumbo, and then the next day was family and company team-building exercises. The location was truly breathtaking, so on the first day there, I woke early to utilize one of the many hiking trails on the property. I wanted to sneak in a hike, before they made us get empowered. I walked to the trail, and was walking in the woods by 7 a.m., and had only been walking for about 10 minutes. I probably hadn't yet gone a mile when I heard it. The vocalization was long and sustained, and at first, I thought it was a bird call, and I stopped to listen, obviously interested, and it kept going and going. At first, I thought, this is quite the call, but then each passing moment gave me more and more confusion. After five or even ten seconds, it became pretty obvious that this was like nothing I'd heard before. Bird calls are loud, but they don't tend to sustain for so long. As I mentioned, I'd like to think I know just as much about animals as anyone. At least, in terms of general identification. Not only because of my qualifications, but just as a person who spends a lot of time outside and has ears. And I guess I was just kind of surprised that I couldn't land on a culprit. Not even any maybes. This call was so long and sustained. I know I already said that, but that's really the part that was so weird. It had a police siren quality, along with a human yell, and with a hint of that iconic chimp chittering. I attached a file for reference. But it wasn't in bursts like with the chimp. It was inlaid with the rest. It had that mildly scratchy chatter to it. And yet, the whole thing was more like a howl, but not like that of a canine. For some reason, I thought, if a cougar howled like a wolf, maybe that would be in the ballpark of what I'm hearing, but of course they don't. Cougar calls kind of have that scratchy quality too, and after it rose and rose for probably what amounted to 35 or 40 seconds, it ended with grumbling. That's the best way to describe it. Like a mucusy grumble that was something like a howler monkey and an elephant, though the individual grumbles were farther apart than either howler or elephant. Part of me wanted to say it was an elk, and nothing more, and there was definitely an elk-like quality to it, particularly in the way that the sound grew and grew, but I was quite confident it wasn't an elk. It was too deep, with too much, quote, voice to it. It's hard to describe a sound that you can't find a match for. It's like describing an unknown color, green, but with some purple and yellow, but not brown. And it's funny, because even at the time, I remember thinking, but elk don't live around here. And it's funny, because though of course elk don't live there, whatever I heard certainly isn't listed as living there either. Yes, I've heard loons before, and it was obvious that whatever produced the call I heard was far more substantial than a loon. A loon starts loud, and then falls. This got louder and louder, and deeper and deeper. But like I said earlier, at first I thought it was a bird, because it started so high. But after ten seconds or so, just by the volume and, quote, wait, I knew it couldn't be. But the sound was bird-like in a way. Plus, loon calls rarely last for more than five seconds, and never over ten seconds. And this call was pretty close to a minute, at least forty-five seconds. 
45 seconds may not sound like a terribly long amount of time, but keep in mind that whatever produced the sound had to be exhaling the whole time. The trachea is one way, so it wasn't breathing for the whole duration. And not only was it holding its breath, but it was actively expelling a huge amount of air. The pipes on this thing must have been extraordinary. And that's one of many reasons that I know it wasn't a bear, either black or brown. Bears simply don't have nearly enough control of their larynx and adjoining apparatus to make a sound as sustained and varied as the sound that I heard. Also, I hate to even say this, but the vocalization seemed to come from something larger than a bear. The call began as very bird-like, almost mechanical, but as the call went on, it became more similar to something I'd expect from an elephant or a tiger, a gurgling, rumbling growl. I've been around large animals all my life, from Guernsey cows to Sumatran tigers, and this was like nothing I've heard before. As I'm standing there, I've basically already discounted that this noise was coming from a native animal, and yet I couldn't think of an exotic animal either. I didn't have an explanation then, and I don't have one now. It's so odd to me that I'm just as perplexed now as I was at the moment I heard it. I'm so used to coming to conclusions, but for this, I simply don't have one. I don't really have an explanation. But one thing I've never been able to shake, now as well as when it happened, is how I kept thinking dinosaur. Obviously I don't know what dinosaur sounded like, but it just sounded right for something like an allosaurus. The beginning was just so bird-like but the end was so much like an elephant or a crocodile. And that's why I keep thinking Allosaurus, or at least a mid-sized theropod, something twice the weight of a moose or more, something bird-like and mammalian at once, something with a long windpipe. I swear that's what I keep thinking. This just looks right for the thing I heard. No, I do not think there are Allosauruses in Vermont, but it sure sounded like one, at least how I'd imagine it to sound. After the call finally ended, Everything was dead quiet, and I can't be sure if the call frightened everything to silence, or if it was simply by comparison. I held my ground for a minute, or at least a few seconds, but then I quickly walked back the way I came. It was odd to feel that way, on what was basically a manicured walking path next to a resort. I didn't know what to think at the time, and I still don't. Was I frightened? I go back and forth on this, but I must have been in danger, even if it was a known animal. It was a dangerous one, herbivore or carnivore, based on the size required to produce such a sound. It felt weird for the rest of the trip. I couldn't adequately articulate what happened. Our little group of friends thought I heard a coyote, or maybe a wolf. My husband said I probably heard a Bigfoot, which at the time I thought was his way of trying to take the edge off. Of course, now I know he was serious. I was so obsessed with my auditory sighting that I could hardly get empowered or team build for the whole trip which didn't feel like much of a loss. You'll have to trust me on this. In the past ten years since this happened, I've spent days, if not weeks worth of hours, listening to all sorts of audio files of animals, and not just stock files. Oftentimes you'll find that stock files only depict the iconic sounds of an animal, the sounds that people want to hear from any given animal. Like if you need audio from a cow, all of it is going to be mooing, even though cows do more than moo. So I've exhausted multiple sources of audio information, and I've found no answers. And weirdly enough, I knew that would be the result. I've spent countless hours listening to recordings of animals, all the while being quite convinced that I wasn't going to find what I was looking for. I knew that whatever I heard that day was entirely atypical. No, I was not by any bodies of water, large or small. It had elements from many animals which is understandable because all vocal structures are relatively similar, but the variance, the range, how it was simultaneously high and low while actually falling and rising at the same time, is something I have not been able to find. It almost sounded like many voices working as one, though it was obviously coming from a single individual. And the grumbling at the end. Well, I found similar calls, mainly tiger, howler, crocodile, and elephant, but none had the same quality. The individual clicks that I heard were too pronounced, and spaced too far apart from each other. So why Bigfoot? If I had to draw the most accurate comparison to the current encyclopedia of extant animals, I would have to say I heard a howler monkey, for no greater reason perhaps than the duration of the call. A howler can sustain its call for 30 seconds, whereas say a gray wolf can at most sustain a howl for 19 seconds, though they're typically between 5 and 10 seconds. And though I didn't time the sound I heard, it was probably pretty close to a minute. Now, I don't think I heard a howler monkey, 
First of all, the call was too long to be a howler monkey, but I would assert that what I heard was most consistent with a howler monkey, or maybe some hybrid between howler, elephant, and elk. And so to be rational, I guess. If I thought I heard a freakishly large howler, I can't ignore that there is a very large community of people in North America who claim to have seen just that. And the answer-seeking learner in me is too stubborn to ignore that. I'm not yet willing to call myself a Bigfoot believer. It'll take more than a yell in the woods to get me there. But I would say I'm an aspiring believer at this point. There's no reason to explain this to you of all people, but it doesn't take someone with a zoological background to point out that a lot of the alleged behaviors of said Sasquatch-type creatures are remarkably consistent with that of known primates, especially when considering that much of those behavioral features were noted long before any formal primatological research whatsoever. Even the most sour skeptic should be able to concede that. Why am I still skeptical? Claims require proof. And unfortunately, there is no proof whatsoever, none that I found compelling anyway. And there is evidence. But again, unfortunately, I'm not convinced. I don't know what I heard that day, but it'll take more than a single unidentified vocalization for me to acknowledge the existence of a large hominid in North America. And yet, I think that's what I heard, so I'm afraid I'm at a loss. And at that, I say this as a long-time listener and enjoyer of your channel, but you have said a couple times that the primate fossil record is full of things like a Bigfoot. With all due respect, that simply isn't true. All the cataloged bipeds were extremely human-like, and the less human-like they were, the smaller they were, though in your defense, Oreopithecus is an exception, the one that developed bipedalism independently. And I recently read an intriguing study that denotes the feasibility of Gigantopithecus being a biped. So you always have your fallback statistic of only 5% of the primate fossil record being completed. So there's plenty of room to find interesting things, I suppose. I fundamentally don't know what I heard that day, and I would really like to. And I think it's important to note that we shouldn't expect all Bigfoot encounters, if indeed the creature exists at all, to be as jaw-dropping as many covered by gentlemen and women such as yourself. Okay, hi, back to me. She made some comparisons in her account, and I think they're worth looking at. She said that it started like a bird, and at first, she thought it was a bird. You're about to hear a pileated woodpecker call, which is often used as a sound effect for jungle or rainforest scenes in movies, though it is a northern bird. Though she said it rose and rose, and didn't falter up and down like that, so I suppose more like a loon. Totally unrelated, but the loon always makes me marvel at what some North African swamp would have sounded like in the late Cretaceous. But of course the loon call is much too brief. Loon calls can't last much more than five seconds. And she said that the thing that she heard lasted for 45 seconds or more, building into a canine-like howl. but with a chittering that was chimp or cougar-like. <coughs> but because of the duration and the way that it had climbed, she said it was reminiscent of an elk. And then after 40 seconds of this, it dropped to a mucusy grumble that she said was like a tiger, elephant, crocodile, or howler though she said that the individual grumbles were farther apart on the call she heard than any of these.
and of all four vocalizations, she thought it was most consistent with the howler. This report is an ample case study in what I consider to be something like a paradox of the educated. And I say this with love because she's really nice. I got mom vibes. I like mom vibes. They make me feel safe. But I've talked to many people who are educated and extremely intelligent who say, in so many words, something like, I saw a Bigfoot, but I didn't, because Bigfoot isn't real, because I've never seen proof of one. Well, that's an interesting stance to take on the world. My favorite thing about this report is also my least favorite thing about it. Isn't that just how it goes sometimes? And it's that it's relatively unremarkable. Make no mistake, the overwhelming, overwhelming percent of interactions with these creatures are subtle and take a person with a particularly discerning mind or a particular degree of knowledge to ascertain that something out of the ordinary occurred at all. I think a great many people in her situation, perhaps even the majority of people in her situation, would have simply thought they heard a bear or a mountain lion and hightailed it out of there. She said that the call lasted between 45 seconds and a minute, and there is only one terrestrial animal that I'm aware of that can hold a call for this long, and it's a beast that you see every day in the mirror. The great apes have robust vocal mechanisms by the standards of the rest of the animal world, and yet theirs cannot hold a candle to ours, and that's because one of our greatest assets as organisms on planet Earth is our ability to communicate, which leads me to believe that whatever she heard that day is capable of at least rudimentary speech. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to like it because that really helps me a lot. And make sure you're still subscribed because subscribers keep telling me that they somehow became unsubscribed. But far more important than any of that, please have a lovely 2024. And as always, thanks an awful lot for listening.